Welcome to this week's blog. It's been a couple weeks since we've put a blog out because I've been down in Mexico and, and I was there for some rest, but also there's a whole lot of stuff going on around the borders and we're getting that in the news, but it goes deeper than that. Uh, there are some things happening in Mexico that tie them into Venezuela the, in Central America. It also ties in Hezbollah from Lebanon. So with the tunnels and what's being done in Mexico and so on and so forth, that won't be this week's blog, but that blog is coming up in the near future. Also, if you're watching this on Facebook, let me encourage you to go to interpretingthetimes.com, our website. That's all one word, Interpreting the Times. And sign up to be an insider because we have, in the next day or two, a special report going out on Israel and Hamas and what's happening over in Gaza. So if you want some more information, some more deeper information on Hamas and Gaza and, and where that could lead, uh, become an insider and get that special report. And if you are an insider, then watch your email box for that in the next day or two with that. So, But anyhow, since we're back, uh, what I want to talk about today is, is Iraq and, and what's happening over in Iraq, uh, especially with the, the Islamic group ISIS, I-S-I-S, -S, is what we've known it as, but just a, a week or so ago, um, they changed the name. They actually formed a brand new government. That government they put a king in place, which they're calling the caliphate. Um, they are now called the Islamic State, and that's it. Islamic State, which is I-S. So we will refer to them as, as I-S, the Islamic State. And what they're doing is they're still taking some control of land. Um, it's Ramadan, so it's, it's quieter now than it was a few weeks ago, and, and it will be until the end of July. So, But they're still holding the ground that they're, they're taking, and there's still some battles going on. Right now, they, they estimate they control about 25% of the oil fields in Iraq. They control border crossings that go from Iraq into both Syria and into Jordan. Well, Syria is where they came from, so that, that's kind of home ground for them. They are taking some of the military vehicles that they've gotten in Iraq, and they're bringing them over into Syria, and they're taking some more territories in Syria, so they're expanding their, their growth in Syria and Iraq. But Jordan is very interesting to me. When you look at this nation, it's already been publicly said that, that their next target, where they move on from here, will be Jordan. Well, inside Jordan, some political advisors have come out and said they're very concerned about IS and, and the movements happening in Iraq and it coming into their territory. And, and they've been seeing things in Jordan where internally people have been turning against Jordan and, and fighting for Islamic State. Um, there's been videos put out where they've had you know, young people tear up their passports and say that they no longer want to be part of Jordan, that they want to be part of, of Islam and be part of that Islamic State and Jihad, and they want to fight against Jordan. Right now it's estimated about, about 1,600 Jordanians, their own citizens, have, are fighting against them, that they have joined Jihad, they have joined the Islamic State, and they're fighting against the Jordanian government. And with that 1,600 people, they got another 800 Jordanians who are fighting against their own country for Al-Qaeda. So you've got people internally turning against their country, and Jordan is very concerned about this, but yet it's not being reported. There's nothing being said about it. I went on and read their, their local newspaper, the Jordanian Times today, and his, the three headlines that caught my eye on the Jordanian Times were first about, about college students, reach, recent graduate. Uh, the article was talking about they want to become entrepreneurs. Uh, the second one dealt with uh, the port area and the strike. The port workers are on strike, and this hope that that strike may come to an end. And the third headline was about homes, and they were encouraging and urging homeowners to consider getting solar energy generators, so going to solar power and using solar power generators for, and not electricity. That was the three headlines in the Jordanian Times as of today. Not much about, about IS, not about much about the Islamic State, not much about the fear and concern about what could lead there. There was one article, um, several pages in, that talked about that, and it was by a cleric. And basically all he said was that he was not in agreement with the philosophy, the theology of the Islamic State. And it made me think about it, because you have some internal concerns in Jordan where their own citizens are turning against them and, and fighting for what would be called the enemy. And you have to understand that, that the Islamic State has, is recruiting people around the world. And that's really where the story in all this comes to, because as they recruit people around the world, people from every part of the world are coming to Syria and, and joining and being trained and joining the fighting and, and, and going for jihad. The, the New York Times just did a piece within the last week, an article, and the article was talking about the chosen few of distant lands. And it told the story of a young Canadian man 
Now, this young man was in his 20s. He, he was not a social outcast. That's what we think, you know, the, those kind of people. The social outcast people are the ones, the loners. They're the ones that go to Syria or go to the third world and they start fighting. Well, this young man was just a normal Canadian citizen. He was in his early 20s. He held a job. He had family, he had friends, he had some money, um, he liked hockey, he liked outdoor activities. He was as normal as, as anybody you would look at in any culture. But yet he had this calling and this feeling, this desire, whatever the terminology is, to go to Syria and to become part of the jihad and to fight against you know, what most of the world will stand for. So it became very interesting that this, this recruitment video is being used because this young man on the recruitment video was actually killed fighting jihad, fighting for the Islamic State in Syria. He died on a, on a field by an airport, trying to take control of an airport in Syria. So this video of him running across the field and, and his, his, his death happening, but yet he's still on this, this, this recruitment video, and, and IS is still using it around the world. And they're attracting people from Europe, and they're attracting people from Canada and from the States. And it just, it's amazing to me, that's where the real story comes from. Because as we watch Iraq, and we, as we watch IS take airports or oil fields or cities, what we're not seeing, what's not being talked about, is the recruitment behind the scenes. And how big this can actually get. When you, when you look at their movement, you know, they have a new government, they have a new king, they have a new name, they have a new philosophy. They're moving very strongly and aggressively and recruiting just the average everyday person. How many will they get? Where does it lead to? What happens next? They haven't taken Baghdad yet. Um, you know, and there's been groups that rise up said we're gonna fight for Baghdad, not because of the, of the country, but because, you know, especially the Shia believers, the, the museums are there and the, and the artifacts are there. They wanna protect those. So if Baghdad doesn't fall, if they don't go that direction, what happens? What if they go to Jordan? If, if Jordan falls, how far behind is Saudi Arabia? I mean, this whole thing could go from Pakistan all the way through Europe. It's amazing how big it can get and the plans they have and how aggressive they're being. And, and yet no one's really talking about it. No one's thinking it through. Is anybody really seeing the big picture? And that's why I want to call the attention to today. You can pick up the newspaper and see the headlines, but what's the news behind the headlines? And where does this all lead? It, it's very interesting to see how big this, this could actually get. We might think in America it won't affect us, but it will. I mean, Canadian, that's on our border. That's, that's right there. And, and they're recruiting people very aggressively and very strongly. So I just wanted to, want you to be aware of what's happening, be thinking about that. Go to interpreticatimes.com. If you're not watching this on that site, if you're seeing it on Facebook, then become an insider. Get the special report that we're going to put out in the next day or two about Hamas and Israel and Gaza. And when you look at that and you look at Iraq and you look at Jordan, it, it's an interesting, interesting time that we live in, is it not? Anyhow, I just wanted to make you aware of what's happening, be up to date. Look forward to seeing you next week on a new blog. Until then, God bless you.